Hey, what's up? I'm Michael Alvarez, and you are watching the first of multiple videos where I will going to show you how you can implement network programmability and automation with Python and Napalm. In this first video, I want to show you what Napalm is, how it works, and in the process learn part of its history. I want to show you how you can install this library and at the end see the official documentation that can serve as a guide and consultancy. So let's get started. Let's start by defining what NAPOM is. NAPOM is an acronym in English that stands for Network Automation and Programmability Extraction Layer with multi-vendor support. Yes, it is a quite long name for a library and at first difficult to understand, but do not worry, you will understand later. Napalm is a Python library created in 2015 by David Borroso and Elisa Hasinska. It is an open source software project published and maintained on GitHub under the Apache 2.0 license. Although it was a project started by two people, currently more than 100 developers have contributed on the source code of Napalm. The goal of David and Elisa was to unify in a library the access to network devices, the consultation of the data and the manipulation of the configuration of different network operating systems. Through a unified API, Napon allows data to be collected using the same functions to query devices with different operating systems. Currently, the main project supports the following operating systems. Arista iOS, Cisco iOS, Cisco iOS XR, NXOS, and Juniper JunoS. A very interesting point is that this project opened the doors for the community to create developments of other vendors. How does Napalm work? Let's see it in the following way. If you want to access different network devices with different operating systems through Python, you will most likely find and use libraries developed for each operating system. It will be a heavy task to apply network programmability and automation in a multi-vendor network as we have to study and learn to use the functions of each library. To make it easier, Napalm adds a layer of abstraction. This layer is what allows us to use the same functions to perform the same action in different operating systems. Now the question will be, how does Napalm do it? What Napalm does is to hide the interaction with the multiple libraries from us unifying the way we access a network device. This is possible thanks to the introduction of the network driver concept. Every time we want to interact with a device, we only have to specify with which operating system we are going to talk, and Napalm will select the correct network driver. In other words, it selects a library with all the functions related to that operating system. For example, as we can see on the screen through the getNetworkDriver function and passing it the operating system parameter, Napalm prepares the correct library to talk to the device. Basically, Napalm is like an API on top of another API. Well, we are done with the theory. Now, Let's go to the action. To install Napalm, we need to meet the following requirements. We will need a machine with Linux operating system. In my case, I will use the Ubuntu console for Windows 10. We need to have Python installed. We need to have the Python library package manager, PIP, and optional, although recommended in my opinion, we will use the virtual Python environment.
Once these requirements are completed, we will install Napalm with the command pip install Napalm. Let's see it. Good. Here we have the Ubuntu console for Windows 10. The first thing we are going to do is to verify the version of Python that we have installed. With Python 3-V we can see the version that we have of Python, in this case version 3.6.9. Once we have confirmed that we have Python 3 installed, we continue with the installation of the Python virtual environment. In this case, I already had this package installed, so the process did not take a second. Then, to create a virtual environment, we execute the command python 3 mvn and the name of the virtual environment that we are going to create. In this case, I call it Napalm Practice. When we execute enter, we will see that a directory called Napalm Practice is created. So, to activate this spiritual environment, we will execute the command source Napalm Practice slash bin slash activate. Immediately, we enter and activate this virtual environment. To confirm the activation, see the name of the virtual environment that is placed in parentheses in the left of the Linux username. If we want to leave this virtual environment, we only have to execute the command deactivate. The next step is to install the pip package. First, we re-enter to the virtual Python environment. And already within this virtual environment, we execute the command sudo app install python3 pip. With this, we install the python package manager inside the virtual environment. We are now ready to install the Napalm package, but before proceeding with this step, I'm going to install a series of packages that are recommended by the official Napalm website for the Cisco IOS operating system to work correctly with Napalm. Once these packages are installed, then we execute the command pip install Napalm. Once the package is installed, we can validate it with the command pip3 show napalm. With this command, we can see that the napalm package was installed and what version of napalm we are using. In addition to that, we can also see the location where this napalm package was installed, which as you can see was installed in the virtual environment that we create called napalm practice. Now we are going to test the Napalm library by creating a Python code that allows us to validate the connection to an iOS router. We are going to create a Python file with the touch command. Let's name it napalmtest.py. We validate the creation of the file. And we are going to edit this file in a graphical text editor called Atom. Atom is my favorite text editor for coding. Immediately, we will proceed to open the file from the graphical text editor. Well, now let's code.
basically what we did was first we import the napon library to be able to use all the functions that are in it we create the main function inside which we write our code the next thing was to call the get network driver method passing it the ios parameter this returns the class that contains the network driver of the ios operating system with this class we proceed to create an object instance that will control the router passing it as a parameter the ip the username and password of the router to which we want to connect once we create this object which we name it ios router we can execute the open method to start the connection to the router. If this connection do not throw an error, then it basically means that the connection was successful. With the ipsalite method, we can verify the status of this connection. Finally, with the close method, we close the connection and with this we finish our code. With our code ready, we are going to proceed to run it in the console with the command python3 napontest.py. As we can see in the output, we print the connection process which was successful. Since in the connection status, we can see that the ipsalite function returns true, indicating that there is an active connection with the router. Finally, we are going to see the official Napon documentation. For Napon, we have two sources of documentation. One is the official page called napon.readthedocs.io and the other is the page where the project is located. Let's see both of them. Well, here on the Napon that read the docs dio web page we can find more details and tutorials of the installations process we can see details about the packages the library that are dependencies of napalm we can see labs examples programming examples we can see the details of the commands that are supported by the different operating systems the parameters that are sent to it and the parameters that they return this type of details and more can be found within this page. Also, if you are a Python developer and you would like to contribute to this project, on this page you will find the details of how you can contribute to the project. Now let's move to the GitHub page where the project source code is basically located. Here you can see the details about the project, its license, who the contributors are, what version of Napalm they are on. You can also inspect the source code as such, which is rich in content and with you can learn how it works. If you want, you can learn to modify the code to suit your needs. Also, at the documentation level, you can find here how to upgrade the Napalm version in case a new version has been released. You can also find information about Napalm integrations with automation infrastructures such as Ansible, SoulStack, and StackStorm. Engineers, we have come to the end of our introductory video of Napalm. In the next video, this will get more interesting because we are going to work with Cisco IOS and IOS XR routers. So subscribe, turn on the notifications so you don't miss it out and continue learning network programmability and automation.